My name is Rachel, this is Ruby, and we're joined by Juice Rap News, Giordano, Jeremy, and Mantra. Hello guys, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure to be here. Um, cool, so to start off, what is Juice Rap News? And also, why the name? Alright, this is a really good question actually. Um, <laughs> Giordano loves juice. Uh, <laughs> 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 Um, so, Juice Rap News is um, a YouTube series that uh, um, Hugo and I created. Hugo's a good friend of mine, he's a rapper uh, from the UK. We both moved to Melbourne and we decided to make a show where we would deliver the news all in rap against um, beats. And um, so that takes care of the rap and, 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 <laughs> and the news. <laughs> and, uh, and basically the juice is, is that element which really makes the show uh, tick and which I think is what you know people who love the show really get into is the fact that we really try to squeeze the essence of a story out like you know so whatever topic we're getting to and we try and get, get through the filters the layers you know whether it's conspiracy theories or or propaganda or whatever we try to get to the kernel of truth that will resonate you know and so yeah juice is like you know squeezing something out that's like tasty and nourishing and healthy you know <laughs> just <laughs> Um, and as a more serious question, where do you think that Juice Rap News kind of fits, like as you said what it is, why do you think that fits within the kind of political discourse as a whole, like obviously you guys have performed here at the Logan Symposium among like other investors and journalists and stuff like that, like how do you feel like it fits in among that? Um, juicy, juicy yeah, way. Um, well like we kind of hesitant about calling ourselves journalists yeah. um, because you know we're, we're not by profession. However, we kind of entered into that role, and um, we've been told that we should really own that, you know, that title and yeah, kind so of just Jake you know, Applebaum. Jake so Applebaum. Nice yeah. Well, there Welcome are a to lot the of team. yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> there are a lot of uh, people within the world of journalism, I think, that do consider uh, what you guys present as rap news as uh, very, very authentic journalism. Um, a lot of people. We'll, we'll regard it as journalism. I think it's cool that you know you don't necessarily have to say it yourself. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's the coolest one. Other people say yeah. That yeah, 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 yeah. That's, exactly. that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's why. We we can't. So, Juice Rap has been going for a like pretty long time. You have loads of episodes, and would you say that you have like something that stands out as a favorite for you? Yeah. Um, well, it's been going for about six years, um, and that stands out as a favorite for you. Yeah, um, well it's been going for about six years um, and I think my personal favourite is um, episode 30 which is called um, The New World Order. It was kind of we'd been building up to that episode from the very beginning. We wanted to critique this concept, you know, the Illuminati and the New World Order and which is, you know, something that is like, it's a huge thing in especially younger people but not necessarily, like it's just a really prevalent kind of way of explaining reality which is very convincing to a lot of people but has all these holes in it, you know, and so we really wanted to critique it, but we wanted to do it in a really convincing way. And so we had to kind of develop characters like Terence Moonseed and Bilderberg. We kind of had to develop that, and it took like five years before we actually felt we had kind of built the foundation. And then that episode really came out, which really critiques the idea of this new world order, this kind of like, you know, Illuminati that are up at the top, um, which I've always felt is really kind of like... Um, flawed because um, it all relies on the sense that you know they are the oppressors and we are the victims mm. and it totally kind of misses the point that yeah. no 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 we are also doing some oppressing <laughs> and you kind of have to know where you fit into that that pyramid of, of power before yeah. you can start to defeat it so let's get real let's actually be honest about who is the real new world order and then so anyway I thought that was a really juicy concept and, uh, <laughs> and we and because it took such a long time to get to that episode that's kind of like uh, my favorite have you got a lot of sticks for the stuff that you Oh, might yeah. have done because it yeah. seems like you have. I know I read a bit about um, the episode which featured Assange, mm. and a lot of people, like said, like were criticising Assange for having done it. Like, how did you feel about that? About him being criticised for being involved with what you guys were doing? So that's this is this is the result of shitty journalism, basically. Right. Because, right. Okay, what happened is. We, we approached Julian and said, we're going, we want to make a video about the Australian election. It's a comedy. He knows what we do. It's satire. It's a parody. And he did a little cameo in it. We went back to Australia, edited the video, put it up. <coughs> and uh, journalists, uh, the, instead of reporting that this was part of a video by Juice Rap News, which we've been going for like four years, you think that they might you know, done a little bit of research. Yeah. And they had just worked with him previously mm -hmm. also at that point, right? Us? Yeah, well, you'd worked with us Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, we, they'd been written, yeah. Um, they just cut the, the video of Julian wearing the mullet, put it like 
put it up on the newspapers and said that this was a WikiLeaks campaign video um, that oh. we had to use <laughs> to promote his election campaign. Oh, I was like, oh, that's God. totally fucking false. Right. So, and of course, then all the media networks parroted at each other. Yeah. And then eventually it got back to Korea, the, the president of Ecuador, and he was like, why are you using the, the embassy uh, right. uh, premises to wage your, you know, to... Um, Slam the political opponents. That's not right, but that's not what it was, you know. Yeah. So it was that's just a even stupid. Now, like when we were reading up on it, it just said that like he was slammed for being involved in the video yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It didn't mention that the way in which it was portrayed right. is, yeah. is white. No, no, it was definitely um, that. It was it yeah, was because because he does videos in the embassy all the time. Yeah, but this one yeah. was inappropriate because it was portrayed as a political, you know, thing. Yeah. Whereas, do you think yeah. the satirical nature of it kind of hindered that as well? Like. That maybe came across as a, a more light-hearted and, and not yeah. serious use of, of his time. Oh, to yeah, yeah, totally. You know, look, probably he should have done it. Which is probably true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, but is, it was it exactly is a pretty amazing, amazing mullet wig. Though. Yeah. So with that, like, news criticism, do you think that's kind of a recurrent, like, issue with satire, just that issue of reception and people just missing the point? Yeah, yeah. Uh, often when people get upset is they don't appreciate satire, you know. Um, that's often, I think, that's what happens. Um, people take it... Yeah, people, I don't know, that's, that's been my impression, but yeah. Well, I think people seem particularly keen, I don't know if historically this has been different or not, but uh, I feel like people, have, uh, especially within the world of journalism, they're very quick to um, try and assess whether a joke is appropriate or <laughs> yeah. um, whether it's um, in, in, in poor taste or, or not. Um, and I, I think a lot of the time, the opinion that comes back, either from the journalists or from their audience, the opinion that comes back on whether it is or isn't appropriate is whether that person finds it funny. Yeah, yeah. that's um, right. And, you know, I don't, I don't think you have to find something funny for it to be appro an appropriate, uh, you know, joke or, or form of humour. Obviously, you're not going to find everything funny and something might offend you, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, something that shouldn't be spoken about or shouldn't be joked about. Yeah. Um, with, the, uh, with the rest of your music careers, would you say that you see rap as a political form? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that, that's its, its roots, you know, and there's... I think it's a tool to, to say so many things and um, I, I think for Rob and I both, you know, we, we like to deliver uh, you know, personal uh, anecdotes and we like to just deliver some stuff where we're just flexing, you know, and, and messing around but then there's always that element of, of delivering our opinion on issues and, and the world, yeah. Yeah, like I, def I definitely don't think rap is only uh, a form of political expression. Um, and I don't think it's ever only been a form yeah. of political expression. Like, obviously, it had that um, kind of cultural movement behind it early on, but the music itself was never a, a reflection of that, at least in the, in the very early days. Um, it obviously became that later on, and that became one of the great strengths of hip-hop as a culture and, and a movement. And it's, it's kind of a big uh, privilege and honour to be involved in that, um, you know, 30, 40 years later. Um, but uh, like the first hip hop record that I ever got was uh, was a Public Enemy record, yeah. and you know that was, and that's what made me fall in love with hip hop. I was like six or seven, <laughs> um, and my you know my older god brother hooked me up with a you know a dusty old tape of, <laughs> of Public Enemy, and then I went and bought their record, and that kind of I think that was a really good starting point because it meant that I never really took the the forum of hip hop lightly. Um, even though we will, uh, we will, uh, you know, like Jeremy says, we'll, we'll mess around on a track. We'll just have fun, um, but there's always going to be that serious element that we represent as well. And, and you know, we, I feel like it's a personal responsibility to kind of yeah, honour okay. that and honour the honour the um, the opportunity to, to reach so many people and have them listen to your political or, or personal opinion on things. Um, yeah, I think that's something that, that needs to be respected and, and upheld. Yeah. You know, things like, like rap, it's, it's the same as what we do on our records. I think there's a lot of people listening to our records that maybe hadn't thought about a certain issue until we bring it up. I by no means am an, uh, uh, an authority on many of the things that I talk about, but maybe that means that person can kind of gain an interest in that topic and then go do their own research, yeah. which, is, which is dope, and that's what rap news does. How does the media disregard certain people and the views that they hold? I'd like to examine current Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn as an example. Jeremy Corbyn, 251.
Labour is now a serious risk. Labour under Jeremy Corbyn will hurt working people. He seems like the kind of teacher everybody takes the mick out of when you first start school. Is there a sort of element of gentle media bullying going on of a chap? Nothing you know, gentle about it. Nothing gentle about it. <laughs>